I'm not a famous musician. I'm not a YouTuber with millions of subscribers. In fact, I'm not an influencer who has some kind of uh, impact in this world. But hey, Thomas Blug, would you accept my challenge? About six or seven years ago, I walked into a local music center that was a rock shop in Karlsruhe to buy a new set of strings. But what I found there on that day blew my mind, and this was a blue guitar amplifier. What was it? Well, basically, this was a 100 watt uh, guitar tube amplifier that uh, did sound awesome as a tube guitar amplifier is supposed to sound. But the interesting about that amplifier was it was compact. It was light, less than one kilogram, and uh, it was made in a floorboard uh, format. Uh, it looked uh, basically like some average uh, guitar processor. So I was excited uh, back then uh, with a compact gear, so I asked the manager uh, how much does it cost. Well, the manager allowed me to try it out, but he told me that he couldn't sell me this amplifier because it wasn't released yet, and uh, basically he doesn't know the price. So, basically, I was able to try it out before its official release, and if I uh, had my camera back then, I would probably uh, make some uh, first gear review of the Blue Guitar Amplifier, even before its official release. However, um, this uh, uh, Tube Guitar Amplifier appeared on the Glenn Freakers show, the SMG, and he was... Uh, all excited about it. The Thomas uh, Blue, uh, who designed this amplifier, uh, took uh, the critical review of Glenn Freak uh, seriously. He basically wanted to design uh, the amplifier that delivered uh, uh, the sound of his favorite uh, Marshall Plexi or Marshall GCM 800. The a classic rock or blues uh, amplifiers in a small format that was pretty compact and uh, reliable. But he noticed uh, that uh, metalheads like Glenn Fricker had to throw some kind of uh, stone boxes in front of amplifier to get metal sound. So a couple of years later he uh, brought another version, uh, the high gain version of uh, his first amplifier that's called Iridium Edition. And uh, this was designed for metalheads, basically. So, uh, this guy takes his job seriously. And both of those amplifiers can be purchased uh, anywhere worldwide, I guess. At least it, at Toman uh, you can uh, purchase them for under 700 euro. And both of them uh, sound uh, awesome. However, it seems like nobody noticed another thing that uh, he designed, and this is Blue Box. What is it? Well, basically, this is speaker emulator, and uh, he uses the impulse responses, so basically this is digital, but this is uh, different from uh, the all the impulse response uh, players or emulators on the market. So, how is it different? Let's take a closer look at it. First of all, Thomas Blue figured it out that having DI out is a good thing. Now I don't have to add another DI box to be able to transfer unsymmetrical signal into symmetrical. It has line out, I plug my uh, uh, floor monitor to be able to hear myself on stage. It has line in, I plug my tube guitar preamplifiers. Uh, but if you like to play with a real amp, it has a speaker level in and through uh, connectors. Basically, you connect uh, the output of your speaker, of your amplifier into speaker in, and uh, a speaker through you connect either to your uh, guitar cabinet or to a load box. This way you don't overload the tube guitar power amp section. But what uh, makes this uh, speaker emulator really interesting is that you don't uh, use the third-party impulse responses. 
all the impulse responses are there on the internal memory of uh, the blue box. You can't load any third-party impulse responses. And if you think that uh, those are not good enough, well, think again. Thomas Bluck, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I guess he took uh, some of his uh, personal uh, guitar cabinets and I guess he has some kind of rare collection, some of the rare 70s uh, guitar uh, cabinets. And he made his personal impulse responses. So, my favorites are some from the 70s, uh, where I can get this classic rock uh, uh, guitar sound. But there is something for metalheads, for jazz musicians. And this is a quite a good collection of the impulse responses. So, I guess you won't be disappointed uh, with uh, the collection of the impulse responses that are there. But what I really like about it, I don't have to spend uh, a lot of time bringing up the menu, then uh, pressing function, then connecting uh, something to the laptop or the computer to be able to change the parameters. You need another cabinet, you simply turn the knob. And this is how it's uh, made easily. But this is not uh, everything. You have another knob here to change uh, the position of the virtual mic, and this is uh, what makes it uh, unique. I simply uh, call up my uh, studio work, and I play guitar and adjust the microphone in simple turn of a knob without uh, making some huge adjustments. And that's what makes uh, all the work uh, very easy. I played with it a little bit so you can actually see and hear how good it does it sound and uh, how easy it is to operate. <laughs>
at this point I tell something like, hey guys, this device is really great, I can totally recommend it, go out and grab it, and I actually do recommend to check out this device. But with uh, all this series where I talk about uh, history and future of uh, guitar cabinet emulation, I want to appeal to manufacturers. Well, why do I like this device? Because it's easy to operate. You can choose 16 presets of 16 different uh, cabinet emulation with diff, uh, just single turn of a knob. You don't have uh, to uh, bring up the menu and uh, press function and do the whole 10 step with all the digital interface or you don't have to have a, a, another additional tool like laptop or computer to adjust some settings. Just simple turn off a knob. So if you use uh, the third party impulse responses you can actually add something like this. Some uh, analog uh, knob that you can turn with a simple movement of your fingers. But what uh, I think is sort of revolutionary, you can actually adjust the position of a mic. What do you know about the impulse responses? Basically, you put your mic in front of the cabinet, you make the snapshot of the cabinet and uh, that particular mic and you stuck uh, kind of with this setting. I don't know how Thomas Bluck managed it, so you can actually adjust the position of the mic afterwards. Maybe it's, this is some kind of uh, simplest uh, filter, like uh, it cuts uh, some of the high frequencies, but it works really great. So making something like this adjustable is a really nice idea. You can uh, actually uh, think of uh, experience with the Kemper profiler. Maybe you can profile the sound of the particular microphone, you can profile the sound of the amp, you can profile the sound of the cabinet, but the ability to make the adjustment after you made the profile is the huge thing. So. Basically, I could do the backwards engineering and to figure out how Thomas Bluck uh, made it. Or some other manufacturers might do this as well, that this becomes an industry standard, maybe this uh, put uh, uh, Thomas Bluck out of business. Or Thomas Bluck, this is appeal at you, you might uh, think of some kind of uh, another speaker emulator where you can make any adjustments uh, after the fact you load the impulse uh, responses. And I am talking about uh, some kind of speaker emulator where you can use the third-party impulse responses or you can make your own cabinet impulse responses and tweak it afterwards. So this is uh, what I'm thinking should be the industry standard. It makes uh, life uh, so much easier. Well, it made my life easier even uh, then I, uh, that I can't use any uh, third-party impulse responses. But this is great device. So I guess I made my point and that's all for today. Thanks for watching, have a nice day and keep on rocking. While I was editing that video, I figured out that a couple of more devices appeared on the market in the last couple of years. Some of them uh, have uh, exact the same uh, simple operation with a simple uh, turn of a knob, and uh, you can uh, load the third-party impulse responses. Maybe I check them out as well. So stay tuned for the news.